welcome to this new presentation of new part of the ecology uh, this will be the part about for uh, behavioral ecology and the uh, next few presentations we're going to focus on many questions of this part of the ecology and for today we will talk mainly about foraging and territorial behavior so my name is Divna and we can start now Okay, so for the beginning to define the behavior of ecology, it can be considered as the study of the behavior of an organism and its, its, its natural behavior. So behavior ecology is concerned with interspecific and intraspecific relationships, such as mating and foraging and defense, and basically how behavior is influenced by neutral selection, all typing into basically evolutionary ecology. Um, behavioral ecology emerged from scientists of ethology, Nico Tinberg. And this would be his picture. And what he did, um, he made a baseline for this science, asking these four main questions to address when studying animal behavior. So basically, survival value, proximate causes, ontogeny, and phylogeny of behavior. Uh, if an organism has a trait which provides them with a selective advantage, so it means that it has an ad adaptive significance, in its environment that net n nature selection can potentially favor. Adaptive significance therefore refers to the beneficial qualities, such as in terms of increased survival and reproduction, any given modified trait conveys. For example, genetic differences between individuals may lead to behavioral differences, some of which in turn may drive differences in reproductive success and ultimately over generations. Of course, the increased dominance of individuals with those favorite traits, basically evolution. Individuals are always in competition with others for limited resources, for example, food, territories and mates, we talked about this in previous presentations. And conflict will definitely occur between predator and prey, between rivals and mates, between siblings, mates, but even between parents and, and their offspring. On question Nico asked, among others, is a survival value. That is actually how does an animal's behavior allow it to stay alive or actually keep its offspring alive? Uh, there was a nice experiment that uh, Mr. Tinberg did on, on concluding this question and he observed that after gall nesting hatched, the parents removed the egg shells from the nest. To understand why this behavior occurs, he what he did is camouflage chicken eggs by painting them to resemble the neutral background where they would lie in a and distributed them throughout the area in which the gulls were, were nesting. You can see the picture right here of him painting the, the gull nest in white. So he placed broken eggshells next to some of the eggs and as a control he left other camouflaged eggs alone without eggshells. He then noted which eggs were found more easily by crows and because the crows were could use the wide interior of the broken egg shell as a cue, they ate more of the camouflaged eggs than were near eggshells. Thus, the timber concluded that eggshells removal behavior is adaptive. So basically, it is helpful in reducing predation, and thus increases the offspring's chance of survival. Next, next we can talk about foraging behavior so according to optimal foraging theory neutral selection favors individuals whose foraging behavior is energetically if as efficient as possible foraging after all turns to be a trade-off between a food's energy content and the cost used to obtain that food so it needs to be more uh, income than uh, usage of it to be in a positive uh, correlation and to basically be useful so in other words animals 
Animals generally tend to feed on prey that maximize their net energy intake per unit of foraging time. Nice examples are shore crabs. You can see them in this picture. And they tend to feed primarily on intermediate sized mussels, which provides the greatest energetic return. Um, larger mussels do provide more energy, but they are also uh, take considerably more energy to crack open and this is what statistics say so this is a diagram showing the optimal foraging approach of, of muscle so <clears throat> you can see the the size of the muscle bas basically an energy gain of them and the number of, of uh, muscles the size of muscles they usually used and you can see here it's intermediate size muscles they used most most further this optimal foraging approach makes two assumptions first is that natural selection will only favor behavior that maximizes energy acquisition if increased energy Reserves lead to increases in reproduct reproductive success. And the second will be optimal foraging theory has resulted from neut neutral selection. So as we know, neutral selection can lead to evolutionary change only when differences among individuals have a genetic basis. So basically it can be passed on future generations. Mm, differences among individuals in foraging behavior may also be a function of age. So, for example, ex in experienced yellow-eyed juncos, you can see them here, they are a small North American bird. So, for example, inexperienced yellow-eyed juncos have not learned how to handle large prey items efficiently. As a result, the energetic costs of eating such a prey are higher than the benefits, and as a result of this, they tend to focus on smaller prey. But only when the birds are older and more experienced to do, they do learn to easily dispatch these prey, which are then included in, in their diet. As a conclusion, n natural selection may favor the evolution of foraging behavior that maximizes the amount of energy gained per unit time spent foraging. So animals that acquire energy efficiently during foraging may increase their fitness by having more energy available for reproduction, but also other considerations such as avoiding predators, also important in determining the reproductive success and, and so on. Now about territoriality behavior and territoriality in, in general. We can start this story about saying that animals often move over a large area, which can also be ho called a home range, during their daily course of activity. So in many animal species, the home range of several individuals may overlap in time or in space, but each individual defends a portion of its home range and uses it exclusively. This behavior in which individual members of a species maintain exclusive use of an area that contains some limiting resources, such as foraging ground food or potential mates, this is called a territory. The critical aspect of territorial behavior is defense against intrusion by other individuals. Territories are defined by displays that advertise that the territories are occupied and they and by over aggressions so a, for example a bird sing from its perch within a territory to prevent a takeover by a neighborhood bird if in, an intruder is not deterred by the song it may be attacked however territorial defense has its cost of course the singing is energetically expensive the attacks can lead to injury and so on in addition Adver advertisement throughout song or visual display can reveal one, one's positions to, uh, to a predator. So here we can see it needs to be economically affordable to defense the territory that you are exclusively using. 
So towards the resource availability, the high depletion rate, towards the low renewable rate, it, this territory is unlikely to be economically defendable. On the other hand, when you have a high depletion rate and high renew, renewable rate, it is more likely to be economically defendable, the territory that a certain animal chose to defend. Uh, according to space and time, uh, the resource unpredictable in space and time are unlikely to be economically defendable. And on the other hand, you have uh, the resource predictable in space and time. Uh, so it's more likely to be economically defendable when you know at what point you should focus your strategy on defense and use the uh, energy savings for defense of the territory because you know in the next moment you will have enough food to regain the, the lost energy. Although there are costs to, to obviously to defend the te a territory, there are also benefits. So these benefits may take the form of increased food intake, uh, exclusive access to mates or access to ref uh, refugees from predators. So, animal really needs to make a big decision of determining whether or not a certain territory is economical for defending, whether the intake of energy will be uh, used in the right way so then the offspring future is certain, it can survive and reproduce and repeat this throughout life. Um, also by escaping predator and so on. So a uh, strategy is needed. Two main potential situations should be taken into consideration when an animal is examining whether or not the territory is economical for defending. So first would be the adjustment of size in response to resource density and the second is adjustment of size in response to cost of defense. So, how an animal can determine how big the the, the territory it it is determined to defense from other intruders should be. Concerning these questions, ecologists develop two hypotheses. So first, hypothesis is animal adjust theory si uh, territory size to the density of the critical resources. So the territory contains enough of satisfied requirements. Uh, there are evidences supporting this idea, like territory size is positively correlated with body weight in a, in a wide variety of animals, and also that resource analysis often reveal that territory sizes are smaller where food is more abundant or nutritious. Uh, you can see here a very territorial uh, spiky mountain lizard species. So in this hypothesis one, what it basically says that more food supply, the territories become smaller. And the second is that food, when food is removed, the territory becomes larger. Logical. On the second hypothesis, it says that variation in territory size occurs because more competitors are attached to areas rich in, in resources and of course these areas are more costly to defend. So the process of, of the situation developing here is that you can have increased resource density which leads to increased intruder density which further leads to increased cost which, and which ends up in decreased territory size. Some on-field experiments provide an information that removal of uh, territory holding male, which is more usual than females to hold a territory. So if you remove a territory holding male, uh, the neighbors expanded territories into vacated area. And also some other proofs are saying that males with more neighbors, they increase time interacting, then they also, as said before, increase the cost for doing so and further the reduced territory size as a as a consequence of a rich area. So the question is should you be 
holding a poor but large area or should you uh, maintain your territory on a really rich area but be on attack constantly and have a high movement rate of large intake of food but also a large spent of energy in defending your territory so we had this graph in a previous slides which is it is simply showing that this would be the cost and this is the benefit the optimum territory size should be somewhere in between where the benefits are higher than costs but still in a, in in the optimal range for life and development of a certain certain animal further about the conclusion this this would be a zero graph let's call and this is the first graph of explaining how things change it says that theory should be larger than the mm, optimum territory because animal would be prepared for deteriorating food food conditions this is what can happen so in the case there is less resources than usual animals should be prepared by having larger territory than it actually needs like more than an optimum so this would be the optimum territory size and this is the larger one having higher benefits just in case the income of resources gets lower than than uh, expected but of course the the costs are getting greater with the size um the second graph which we should take into consideration is explaining that territory should be smaller than the the optimum territory size because animal would be prepared for increased intruder density so that's the other scenario first was to have less in uh, resource available than you predicted the other is animal to have more intruders than it predicted so it needs smaller territory to reduce the amount of energy for defending it and still be, still be able to, to defend it so it says that the territory should be smaller so this is the optimum here and it, this is the optimum size the graph says that it should maybe be smaller than optimum to reduce the energy costs for its defense taking imagine that the animal needs to take all these ideas and a hypothesis into consideration where when deciding of a size and a position of its territory and as a main conclusion we can say that animals should defend the territory larger than optimal because it can easily reduce the territory size and its intruder density decreases, but it can only increase territory size with difficulty if prey density declines. Okay, I hope this was clear and fun to hear about. Stay tuned for further presentations on the topic of behavioral ecology, which I'll be leading you through in the next presentations. Uh, and talk to you soon. Ciao!